Christy Itson, your hostess with the mostest, and this is the Laugh or Cry podcast. In this podcast, we talk about comedy, music, movies, TV, and all things pop culture. We're going to talk about the coronavirus, and Nashville is shutting down. We're also going to talk about The Walking Dead, and what are the best weapons to use during the zombie apocalypse? Stay tuned. Well, yesterday, I went to the grocery store, because Mondays are typically my go to the grocery store days. And I wasn't sure what I was going to come into contact with because I've seen people in Australia fighting over toilet paper. I've seen where people here are now fighting over toilet paper. Luckily, I have a pack. So unless things go really south, I think I've got enough to wipe my ass for the next few weeks. But I go, there's no meat hardly at all. No rice, no bread, even the frozen vegetables, all gone. I mean, seriously, do we really need peas and carrots? Who are buying these? But evidently, those were even gone. I was going to get them to make my dog's food. I usually get chicken, some rice, spinach, peas, carrots, maybe broccoli, and I make their own food. I didn't, I was panicking, so I'm having to get, like, meats I wouldn't normally get to try to put something together to make their food. All right, that's fine, but at least I got enough to get me through, hopefully, this week. Maybe a little of next week, too. On my way out, the lights flash, and I'm like, what's going on? I get out on the street, probably for another block or two, all the red lights are out. So people are having to do the four-way stop. Now, I will say the first two or three lights, people did a pretty good job. There were a few, you know, that lit two or three cars more than they should, but for the most part, Everybody treated it as a four-way stop until I got to the one I was going to turn on to. Everyone's flying through there. And finally, I'm like, I'm going to teach these suckers right here. So I see a little gap, and then I start to, I have, I'm at my stop. I start to do my left. This guy's blowing on the horn. I hold up four fingers for four-way stop. I think he taps me a little bit, but I didn't see any damage on my car. People. This is why I think every 10 years to get your license renewed, you have to pass a written test because people are forgetting that when it's six o'clock in the evening or dark, whichever comes first, you put on your headlights. Uh, Two, just because your daytime running lights are on doesn't mean that I can see behind you. Your taillights are not on. People need to learn that when you, uh, you you should use blinkers whenever you're going to turn or change lines. Blinkers are amazing. And fourth, how to do a damn four-way stop. If the lights are out or if all the lights are blinking, you're supposed to treat it as a four-way stop. Am I the only one that remembers that? I feel like I am, and I want to beat the shit out of that guy just because I don't think he remembered. So once I got home with my treasures and put them away, I was kind of actually a little bit rooting for the coronavirus because people like that, we need to wipe them off the face of the earth. We've got way too many stupid people walking around. If there was some way to direct the coronavirus to stupid people, that would make me happy. But I got home and I'm I'm trying to like make lemonade out of lemons and realize, okay, maybe this being sequestered to the house for the next few weeks is a good thing because It seems like every time I go to the store, every time I get out on the street, stupid people piss me off. So maybe this is a great thing where I don't have to see them and I have everything I need in my house. I can sit and watch my Magnum PI reruns and not have to worry about people. And it's not my choice either because, as a lot of you know, I do sightseeing tours and All the bars downtown have closed, which has basically wiped my business out. But even before they closed, everybody's been calling to cancel. And I understand that for the next, for the unforeseen future. So basically, even if the bars were open, I still didn't have a job. I don't have any work. That's all right. I take it for what it is. Because while I was downtown this past weekend, I did a few tours. And I actually saw a guy on a bicycle with a gas mask on. Hopefully, he was making a political statement. I'm not going to hold my breath to that, though. But the best of times, the worst of times. Now, this March should be one of our busiest times of year with the SEC basketball tournament going on. 
People on spring break, concert series are starting. We should be super busy. But first, we were affected by the tornado. That kind of devastated people. They didn't know if uh, Nashville downtown was hit. There are people that are still without homes right now. And now you've got these people, because of the virus, that are running out and they're grabbing everything up for themselves. How do we go from a couple of weeks ago being so caring and helping our neighbors, trying to take care and help rebuild, help people clear out their homes, clear out the streets, to now this mad self-preservation hoarding mentality? It's frightening. It really is. Even Tootsie's closed. Now, at first, Steve Smith said no. Unless the state mandates it, I'm not closing. But now, I guess when you're threatened to have your beer permit yanked, you decide to close. So good call on that. I guess he doesn't like that idea of not having a beer license. But now, so many workers are affected. Bartenders, servers, cooks. You've got musicians for sure. Tour guides. A lot of hotel staff are being cut. So many people in hospitality and entertainment are being directly impacted on this. And we don't even know for how long. Is this just going to last two or three weeks? Is this going to last for months? And I think a lot of musicians and servers and bartenders are like me. We don't have a big nest egg saved up because we had what we had saved up. We had to use for December and January which is our slowest time of year. But now we're seeing that this March is definitely slower than December and January were. So we didn't have anything saved because we used it all for the winter. Banking on this, which is normally our busiest time of year, and now tours are canceled, musicians are having to cancel going out on the road, shows are canceled, Broadway's gone black, a lot of cities, not just ours, are being affected. A lot of other cities are making bars close or anywhere that the public gathers. MGM is closing their properties in Las Vegas. You know, shit got real when they started closing the buffets in Vegas. But now, entire hotels are closing. This is blowing my mind. San Francisco is going on a full 24-hour lockdown for the next three weeks. People can only leave to go to the doctor, grocery store, gas station, banks, things like that. L.A., bars and nightclubs are going to close. Restaurants are halting their dine-in service so you can only take out or have things delivered. Even gyms and movie theaters are, are closing down. Gyms! What are the gay man population in West Hollywood going to do with all this free time? I think we know the answer to that. Anyway, New York City... It's closing schools, restaurants, bars, even courts are going to be postponing their cases. Ohio, so many other states are getting involved. Some are saying these quarantines may last between four to eight weeks. Holy shitballs. Now, normally, I'm like, sweet, I can sit on my ass for eight weeks. This will be great. I can get projects done. But not if you don't have money coming in. Not if you're worried about paying your rent. Not if you're worried about keeping the lights on. And I know I'm not the only one. I know there's a lot of us that are having that same fear. And especially when we're not even sure if we go to the store that they're going to have what we need. I'm glad that they're restocking, but people, quit panicking. You're panicking. These grocers don't even have time to take the stuff out of the back and put them out. Trucks are still delivering stuff. People, cool your shit. Calm down. You got enough to get through the next few days. I'm certain of it. If you look through your pantry, something... But grandpa and grandma might not. You're taking food out of somebody else's mouth by freaking the fuck out. So cool your tits, all right? Calm down. I'm actually not convinced I don't have the coronavirus now. Now, I'm not basing this on symptoms or evidence or anything, but purely from me being an only child growing up, and I was never the kid that got the cool thing first. So, yeah, I'm certain I've got it. Even my diseases were hand-me-downs. Chicken pox measles, live through that. And I've been around people. And when I'm in bars, I have to stand super close to people to be able to hear them. So I'm sure I'm getting showered with spit when they're talking. I try to not think about that. But I know when someone's talking to me, they got little droplets of spit that are flying at my face. And I'm sure by the end of tour, I've got a nice 
thin layer of spit all over my face. So I'm confident I have something if it's not the coronavirus. I know I have something. For the longest time, I, I just looked at it as a free flu shot. But hopefully, we're all going to be healthy and fine and okay, but I'm still not convinced I don't have it. I'm concerned about the virus, mainly because people are freaking out so badly about it. Hopefully, I'm healthy enough to survive. Like I said, I've lived through the chicken pox in first grade, measles in second grade, and I didn't realize until anti-vaxxers were making a big stink, that measles could have killed me. I didn't realize that. Nobody seemed to be freaking out when I was in second grade, but now to learn, oh, that could have killed me? That's a little bit alarming. And that was before everyone had to get a vaccine. So it's not like they chose to not vaccinate me. It's that it wasn't available. So now I don't understand if you've got uh, a vaccine. Yeah, get that shit. Get that shit. Because I think they've proven it does not cause autism that's a genetic thing. So get that out of your mind. And I'd rather, oh, and ugh, going back to Steve Smith with Tootsies, he'd put a, on a, a, a statement. He goes, yeah, I even had patrons that were here that said they lived through the polio crisis. I'm like, that's not necessarily a good thing. All right. That's why we have vaccines. Is that a bragging right? Is that you're saying you should stay open because you've got a patron that's father time that lived through polio? Uh, no. Stop it. So just saying Tootsies will never get my money again, but neither here nor there. We just went from a couple of weeks ago cleaning and helping neighbors after an F3 tornado tore through Nashville, and now we're hoarding toilet paper. What happened to us helping and loving our fellow man? It's not like more shipments aren't going to come through in the next few days. They haven't run out of toilet paper. They've not quit making it, all right? I saw a video where some big store, they pulled out a pallet of these big cases of, of toilet paper, and they didn't even unwrap them. And these people are coming out like jackals, just ripping it, you know, ripping the plastic off to grab these. I mean, they had to be like, I don't even know how many, 48 rolls or more in this pack, and some people were grabbing two or three of them. That's enough to last me the rest of the year. How much shitting are you planning on doing that you need that much toilet paper? Are you selling it on the black market? What is going on? If you are shitting that much, you really need to see a doctor. Not about the coronavirus, but because you're shitting yourself to death. Okay? Stop with all the hoarding. How much toilet paper do you honestly go through in two months? And they're not just hoarding hoarding the toilet paper. They're hoarding bullets. Oh my God, so if someone breaks in the door, they're coming after your toilet paper, you're going to gun them down? People really are thinking that they're going through a zombie apocalypse right now. And let me tell you, if we do, none of you guys are going to last because you don't know the important things to get. I don't ever see anybody on The Walking Dead using toilet paper at all, so it doesn't seem to be a big problem in the future. I fully believe that when it gets warmer and the sun comes out, that I think some of this will subside a little bit. They call it the winter flu season for a reason. People are confined indoors. The air gets stale. There's pure, a poor circulation. And like cruise ships, they're recirculating contaminated air. So that's why those areas are bad. It, we get a lack of vitamin D because we're not outside. I say we need to eat more ginger, eat more garlic, get out in the sun if it ever comes out, and they're even saying drink warmer beverages, not iced. Evidently, the virus isn't heat resistant. So, you know, just warmer stuff into your body. And you can actually, people are freaking out about hand sanitizer. You can make your own hand sanitizer. You can make it from probably stuff you've got in the house. You've got some 99% rubbing alcohol and pure aloe vera. Not like aloe vera with other stuff in it. Pure aloe vera. Two to one ratio. Two parts rubbing alcohol, one part aloe vera. Now, if it's less than 99% rubbing alcohol, do a three to one. And then if you've got essential oils, not the kind you get at Walgreens, I mean real essential oils like doTERRA or something like that, add several drops of tea tree or lavender. You got to use good quality stuff, not this perfumey crap. And that, boom, instant hand sanitizer. We are living in crazy times. 
This respiratory virus, which is kind of like some sci-fi stuff they make movies about, right? We got that going on. There's a plague of locusts in Africa. I mean, what else could happen? Us having problems with Russia? Oh, wait, never mind. That already happened. So I'm just saying that if the zombie apocalypse actually happens, we are not prepared for that shit to go down. Now we're going to talk about The Walking Dead. After seeing how people have been reacting to the coronavirus, I am not confident that most people would survive a zombie apocalypse. I think we've proven that. But let's get into the show. So, a little shocked seeing Magna alive. We still don't know about Connie. Magna walking up. I, at first I thought, is, is she a walker? Well, her eyes aren't changed. Is she? And she just was in shock and walked... So we don't know that Carol's alive, uh, Connie's alive or dead. I'm kind of thinking she might be dead, though. But boy, when uh, Yuke punched Carol, oh, what? She got passionate. Magna's like, I didn't ask you to do that. So kind of a little romantical thing. Will they stay together? Will Magna and her break up? I don't know. But wasn't it so sweet, Carol telling Eugene, you've got to go. If you, if you care about her, just go. So, Carol, still believing in love. And people are asking, what did she find in the leaves? And she found a stick. Come to find out, it's the stick. That stick was Henry's. And she gave it to Lydia after Henry died. What? And, oh my God, Beta. Beta killing Gamma. Oh my God, pretty creepy, creepy, crazy. I thought for sure he was going to take her back to Alpha, but I guess not. He took care of business. And did we just see Beta kill his number one fan? I know some people are saying, like in the comic, I think he was a famous basketball player or something like that. But in the show, they're making him out to be possibly a famous musician. Because in one of the episodes, they were playing a song uh, that he had done uh, and recorded so oh my god we're gonna find out that possibly beta was a famous singer at the time and now crazy deranged killer earl i kind of knew earl had been bitten because he looked like utter shit he looked terrible he looked winded just how they are when they get bit and i give him props for trying to kill himself that was pretty creative I don't know if he just didn't have enough strength to make the direct hit or what, but he, he just knocked himself out, I guess. But thank you, Judith, little ass kicker. She finished the job. So it's hard when you're, you know, you're killing a zombie that you don't know than killing someone who you just talked to as a human being moments before. I'm loving the Negan bait and switch. I called it. I've been saying for weeks that I think Negan is a double spy. I think he's figured out about Lydia and he's trying to infiltrate the Whispers and destroy from within. I love that he got on Alpha's good side. They made sweet, dirty love outside of the latrine. And now, oh, all bets are off. Were you not shocked? When you saw the head rolling to Carol. I know I was. Now, I knew. I knew he was going to maybe do this. I just knew it. People were like, no, 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 no. My thing is, when he grabbed Lydia and took her away, when she woke up, tied up, was she knocked out? Did she faint in a panic? Because it looked like she was unconscious coming to realizing that she was tied up. So I'm curious what happened there. I knew that there's certain things Negan doesn't tolerate. Raping women, killing kids. He said it multiple times, I don't kill kids. Let alone tolerate someone who's going to kill their own kid. He even tried to sympathize with her with the whole Lucille story of his wife. And maybe that's the attraction, seeing her bald, reminding him of Lucille going through chemotherapy and radiation and her being bald. And you could see the passion of like, man, do the right thing, do the right thing in his eyes. And she still was going to go kill Lydia. And that's when he knew he had to take her out. Yes, go Negan. From the beginning, I've said Negan, it's it's all perspective. Because if you were Negan, 
in the in uh, the saviors aspect, the survivors from Hilltop they look like they're the jackasses starting trouble. Rick looks like the dick, so it's all perspective. Was Negan a dick? Sure, but when that head rolled to Carol, and I'd heard people whisper that Negan, pardon the pun, whisper that Negan and Carol had a thing going together. I I like what when they never talked, they never have ever had a conversation together. I don't think. But when she said, took you long enough, I was like, ah, sweet. So I'm thinking the next couple of episodes, maybe not the next one, because the next one's going to be Michonne's Exodus. So, but hopefully in one of these, we're going to, I bet it's going to be the Look at the Flowers, because which one, uh, one of them's named Look at the Flowers, which I think is an homage to Carol putting a bullet in What's-Her-Face's head. But... Oh, I'm loving this. They've got to have a flashback episode showing how Carol let him out. And I'm sure Gabriel's got to be thinking, oh my God, it's all my fault. Does this mean it's not his fault for him escaping after all? Or was Gabriel in on the plan too? We just don't know. That's why we're going to need an episode that has flashbacks of watching her talk with him, them devising a plan, maybe her letting him get out. Maybe Gabriel's involved, maybe he's not. And now Beta. Again, I thought he was supposed to bring Gamma back to Alpha. He is going to be so pissed to find out that Negan killed Alpha. He is going to be out for blood. Oh, I'm so excited to see what happens. And then what's going to happen with the Whispers? Are they going to disband? Are the survivors going to just wipe them all out? I just don't know. So much has got to happen in the next few episodes. Because we know Michonne, I think the next episode's her last episode. She's leaving the show. Does she find something to realize that Rick's alive? And the teaser, it looks like he find she finds some bullets, is what it looked like to me. But she finds something to let her know Rick is alive. We know Maggie comes back. I'm assuming that they're going to start rebuilding Hilltop. And I assume at some point they're going to find medicine to help King survive this cancer that he's got. I'm so excited. Like, there's so much going on. I can't believe people. There's so many people. Oh, I quit watching after a blah, blah, blah episode. You guys just don't even know. I haven't even begun to tell you about Dog. I love Dog. Everyone's like, oh, if, if Daryl dies, we riot. I say if Dog dies, we riot. In the cave, I was losing my mind thinking that, you know, poor Jerry was going to die. I freaking love Jerry. And is Jerry's wife going to die? Because she's like, it burns, it burns. Could that be from the fire? Or did she get bit? Oh, I can't wait to see Stephanie. I'm assuming Stephanie's with the Commonwealth. So much to see, so much to do. But with toilet paper gate uh, going on here, plus the Walking Dead, it gave me a thought of if and when, which I'm, it's looking more like when than if, we have a zombie apocalypse, or any kind of apocalypse, kind of like what we're living in now, what would be your weapon of choice? Now, guns, that's always a good, easy bet. You can whack somebody at a distance, but you run out of bullets. Crossbows, we've seen. Daryl has used it effectively, so have others. And I gotta tell you, if you've ever tried to pull back a crossbow freaking hard uh pretty freaking hard that would not be my weapon of choice of course bows and arrows good also hard to pull those back i like a katana i'm telling you that's why michonne has become one of my favorite characters the way she wields that katana and in this uh teaser it looks like she's doing the things where she gets the two walkers chops her their jaws off and it gets them to follow her like she did when we first saw her. So she's kind of going back to old Michonne ways of survival. I love a crazy Michonne, a crazy Rick, a crazy Carol. Those are my three characters I love when they get in batshit crazy mode. I am never more happy when I see Rick go from passive, oh, whatever, we all need to get along to, I'm going to bite your ear off. That's my favorite kind of Rick. Carol, when Carol is living her hermit life, but she knows she's got to go to Terminus and single-handedly save the entire people with her poncho. Yeah, freaking love you, Carol. 
And how Michonne gets the quiet crazy. She's the quiet crazy because she's just like, goes into herself, walking in the woods alone, practicing her art. Kind of like Sasha was that way a little bit too. I did like a crazy Sasha. Carol's knife, great instrument because it also acts as like a little you know, knuckle, knuckle buster plus a knife. So it's if your hands get all bloody, it's not going to slip out of your your hand and the, the knife won't. You're not going to accidentally cut yourself. But it's also like some uh, brass knuckles, so to speak. I found some. It was either at the Horror Festival or at the Walking Dead Festival. I bought one. I'm like, oh, yes. It, it comes with its own little sheath that fits on your belt. Sold. Here, take my money. I wish I would have bought a katana then, too, but there's still time for that. Morgan Staff, I tell you what, that makes me want to learn Aikido. I'm assuming that's what they, they do as Aikido. He is a pretty much a badass with that staff. But I do think a katana or a knife, Carol's knife, is a better weapon. But I wouldn't mind having that Morgan Staff with me too. I don't want to lose my arm, but I have to say Aaron's badass arm is a pretty effective weapon. Where he can just, it's like like one of those... uh little toys we had when we were kids where you can like replace different instead of changing clothes you're just changing arms he puts on a different arm to suit him he has went from passive little oh we're just looking for people to join our community to i'm going to murder you and i know in the comics aaron actually kills beta so i'm curious to see if that's what goes down if if he is actually the one to do it jerry i love jerry jerry has become one of my favorite Frickin' characters. Maybe because he's Samoan, and I've got a thing for long-haired Samoan guys. I don't know. But he is gorgeous, and he wields that battle axe, or, you know, till it broke, wielded it like a mother. He is a strong son of a gun. Anything Jerry does, I am okay with. And he and King Ezekiel, I mean, what better weapon than a tiger? I cried when that fake tiger died. I cried like a little bitch. One, because Ezekiel is hot as shit. And two, oh, it's a tiger. It's a cute little animal. I I think they find just the hottest guys to be on this show. I swear to God. Sadiq, hot. Ezekiel, hot. Cooper, hot. So many hot guys on this show. So cute. Negan, I would love to fill those dimples up with water and swim around in them. He is just the most adorable thing. Even when he's being a dick, that's what makes him even cuter. He needs to put a little meat on him. He's kind of like all skin and bones, but I guess one would be in the zombie apocalypse. But we got to put a little meat on him. I like mine a little meatier. Thank you, Jerry. But uh, and but the, my only thing is that Ezekiel would have to keep that Shakespearean accent because I got to tell you, that is sexy as shit. Does thou want to go to my chamber? Mm, meow. Panties coming off. I did like Daryl's Morning Star, but I would uh, that would not be a practical weapon to me, because one you got to get up close, which I know you do with Carol's knife and the badass arm. But I would just I hit somebody and it would come around and hit me. I just know it's so not effective. Machete. All right. You may or may not know this about me, but I may like The Walking Dead a little too much, and I got like a little gift card from REI. And that's a sporting goods store. It's got camping equipment, a little bit of everything. So I thought, how am I going to spend this money? And I went, and I thought, well, oh, here, I'll get a filter for... A f- it, it, always, it's in case the zombie apocalypse happens. I'm just definite it's going to happen. And I'm so I'm grabbing things like, oh, I'm going to need this multi-tool that's shaped like Sasquatch. And here, let me get this water purifier. And let me get this other thing. And they had, they called it the Junior machete it's like a saw on one side machete on the other and I saw that and I'm like oh yes I must have that that shall be mine when will I ever need a machete I'll tell you when zombie apocalypse it's not as big as a full machete but it's it's pretty darn good sized and it's sharp so I've got my machete I got my carol knife I got a gun bullets run out I've got the other two and I was at Kroger one day which is a grocery store here in Nashville. And I'm going, it's not my normal Kroger, so I'm going down the aisles trying to get, you know, figure out where things are. And I see what I call the murder aisle. It's got your duct tape, your 
rope for a, quote, clothesline, and I look down and I see a hatchet. Never in my life have I ever in a grocery store seen a hatchet. But a few months prior, me and my friends went to axe throwing, which I totally expected not to like. I, I've seen videos of people throwing up and the axes coming back. I thought, oh, great. This is how I kill myself, you know. I thought, well, we're just going to power through this. I'm not going to like it, but let's get it over with. I freaking love axe throwing, and I'm really good at it. That is like, I'm like, okay, zombie apocalypse, this is going to be one of mine. Because they're kind of light. You don't need a real heavy one. I can wield an axe, let me tell you. And that's the kind of thing you can do some distance on, too. Like, I don't have to be right up on somebody to kill them with an axe or a hatchet. So did I buy that hatchet? Hell yeah, I did. 15 bucks, I think it was. 12, 15 bucks. So here I am in the murder aisle throwing an a, a, a little hatchet in there with my rice roni and other a sundry of things. Of course, as we've learned with Negan, a baseball bat, always a good weapon. I would say go with aluminum because a wood axe will eventually break. It's going to take some beating to do it. But yeah, I'd say either I keep a wood axe or uh, wood, sorry, a wood uh, baseball bat in my car typically anyway. You never know when you need to beat the hell out of somebody. I can't imagine getting pulled over because if they ask, do you have any weapons, where do I start? I've got the little flashlight that's also a little stun gun. I've got a couple of pocket knives. I've got my little axe uh, hatchet in my car and my baseball bat. So a multitude of ways that I can injure and maim somebody. But in my picks, I already have the, the gun, Carol's knife, machete, hatchet, baseball bat, and the thing I'm going to have to save up for once this outbreak is over and I can start making money and getting on Amazon again, katana. Hell yeah, a katana or katana-like instrument. So, excited about those goings-ons. And in other news, in entertainment, Michaela Spielberg, 23 years old, daughter of legendary film director Steven Spielberg and wife Kate Capshaw, uh, released last month that she's starring in her own solo porn videos. She lives right here in Tennessee, right here in Nashville. She announced that she hopes to score an exotic dancing gig soon as she hustles for her state stripper license. She's got to get that first. Uh, Michaela admits that she suffered from anxiety during childhood and going to boarding school in her teens led to an eating disorder and depression, but she doesn't blame her famous folks. It's not my parents' fault, says Michaela. She was adopted by Stephen and Kate as a baby. She says... They couldn't have known. I don't know why she sounds like that to me, but if you're going to be in porn, I think you need to have that voice. She says that she didn't want to be dependent on her parents anymore, or the state for that matter. She says, It's not like an end of the road, or I have a hip rock bottom choice. She says, This is a positive empowering choice. I realize there's no shame in having a fascination with this industry and wanting to do something that is safe sane and consensual doesn't that sound like what she should sound like it does to me she would put some videos up on Pornhub under the stage name Sugar Star but they were been yanked until she gets this permit passed by the Tennessee Sexually Oriented Business License Board yes that's a real thing that is a real thing and I know somebody who works for it so Michaela hit me up I can get you in touch with somebody She claims her parents are intrigued by her new career path and hopes that they'll be proud of her once she's bounced back after her drinking problem that took her life a couple of times as she turned 21. Anyway, moving on from that, good luck, Miss Spielberg. Venom 2, since we're talking about horror movies, sci-fi stuff, Tom Hardy, another man, that I would not kick out of bed for eating crackers. I would buy him the crackers. He has revealed the first look at Woody Harrelson's return as Cletus Cassidy for Venom 2. And those who saw the first movie remember at the very end, Woody Harrelson's briefly shown, like right after the post-credits, Uh, as the psychopath, and his appearance was remarkable for a few reasons. He had that large red wig on, and but now we're going to see like a new image of Cletus, where the man's become 
carnage. And he's been given a makeover. Now, this guy, for those that don't know, he was a brutal character. Uh, so it's going to be exciting to see him. He was sent to prison for killing nearly a dozen people and admitted to killing even more before he wound up sharing a cell with Eddie Brock. Now, things are a little bit different in the Venom universe, but Cletus eventually bonds with the symbiote that he gets of, of his own. So Venom 2 is filming currently. It's ex- it's expected to arrive in theaters on October 2nd. Right now, they're looking at an R rating for Venom 2 as being a possibility. It's not been confirmed at this time, but this could be a rated R movie. Oh, my God. And Tom Holland's version of Spider-Man will more likely, more than not, be meeting up with Tom Hardy's Venom on the big screen at some point. It's apparently one of Sony's goals. Venom 2 might not be the one that we see him in, but it will be nice to see Tom Holland as Spider-Man and Tom Hardy as Venom. Oh my God. Hells to the yes. Tom Hardy, those lips. I do like him in a beard, but I like him clean shaven because I want to see those lips. Anyway, thank you so much for listening to today's show. If you like the show, please subscribe to the Laugh or Cry podcast and give it a great rating. If you didn't like it, you just keep your damn mouth shut. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram and check out the website at laughorcrypodcast.com. You can listen to Laugh or Cry on Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and everywhere awesome podcasts can be heard. I'm Christy Itson, and you've just been listening to Laugh or Cry.